Hello and welcome to today's webinar. So today, of course, it's a um, it's a deals clinic. We're looking at um, commercial conversions and looking at really kind of some of the schemes that um, that you're all looking to, to put forward and, and we're trying to then use Nimbus just to understand how um, how we can appraise those those schemes quickly um, and also perhaps even just use it to kind of find a few more in a particular location. If we've got particular things that we're looking at, perhaps just show you how we can find some more of those kind of things. To help me with them, um, sort of to get that across today, I have my my colleague here, Andrew, who's our customer success director here. Hey, Andrew, how are you doing? Very well, thank you, Paul. Glad to be here. Very good, very good. Um, so really kind of just to start off today, I thought what would be useful is just spend sort of two or three minutes just running through a few of the kind of key basics, I suppose, some of the sort of principles around um, around finding commercial conversions and making sure the ones that we do find kind of work. And, and I thought um, just to kind of to, to paint that picture, really sort of, I thought I'd start off with two very obvious points, really sort of why, why deals fail. Well, the first real reason that a deal might fail is of course, we don't get planning on it. That's kind of one of the sort of the big obvious ones. And so that's going to be a sort of important part for us today. And the second thing, of course, is the schemes and stack up. So we, we sort of go forward on something. It doesn't, doesn't actually stack up, of course. And so if we sort of bear those two things in mind, then of course, what we can do is we can re-engineer that and turn it outside its head. So actually, we want to go set ourselves up to succeed for something and go and find um, opportunities and kind of look at the, the schemes that we've got and then sort of say, well, how do we, how do we reverse engineer this to go and find stuff that, that works? The obvious thing to do is to go off and say, well, actually, first things first, things are going to stack up. We've got to search in areas where there's value. We've got to search in areas where we can increase the density of a site and drive a land value. Or indeed, if we're going to look at change of use, as we're talking about today, we've got to search in areas for buildings that are in budgets. So we've got to search in areas where there's enough value for the, for the sale price to be high enough. And then obviously, to then understand how that then breaks back to a value of a building to say, well, what can I afford to buy to then convert to make that stack up? The second thing, obviously, making sure that that we're searching in areas where the policy is going to let us do this, or of course, where, where, where the things we're looking for are in line with the policy that's going to allow us to convert these things from one use to the other. And obviously checking those planning headlines along that way is going to be really, really useful for us. By getting those things lining up, what that means you can start to do is you can start to then be a bit more creative with the way that you buy this stuff. So if we can find stuff where we're going to add value by changing the use, then of course that means the value of what you've got with a planning consent is worth more than what the thing's worth without the planning consent, which means you can start to share some of that planning gain with an owner, which means then you can start buying stuff subject to and you can start buying under option because actually I will pay you X if it's an unconditional deal, which is going to be a very close to what existing use values are slightly higher, but not a lot higher. If you can then back to back that with a, a buy, if I get a planning ticket on, you can pay more than what's um, what the thing's worth, which then means people are prepared to, to do deals with you and kind of, engage in that kind of longer process, if you like. We can build in multiple exits as part of that. So build in areas where you've got multiple exits, that's gonna be very useful when it comes to perhaps uncertain times of kind of what's what's coming in this kind of COVID issue we've kind of got at the moment, all that kind of stuff that's sort of bubbling along in the marketplaces. And of course, if we can then find great design teams that can kind of support us, then of course, what they will bring with them is they'll, they'll know the local planners and in effect, they'll build the right scheme for the right price for you if you get that that decent design team sat behind you. So quite simply, the key principles we're adopting are we're, we're looking to build strategies where they're underpinned by policy. Well, we can either go and find sites that suit that and then we can go and campaign off the back of that. So some little tricks and tips just to think about what we're going to need to apply when it comes to make sure things stack up. Obviously getting our comps right. Um, I always work on a rule of three. If there are three comps of a, of a particular type in a certain area and I feel comfortable, I've got that got that comp right. Um, searching areas with land values, we need to sort of show you today how we can do that as well, assuming the questions that we get kind of tie in with that. Um, know your local market, obviously searching in the right parts of town. If you're doing a private scheme, you want to search in um, good areas, if you're going to convert commercial buildings into, um, I don't know, affordable housing or something like that, or if you're going to convert them into social care or something like that, looking in the right areas of town are going to be really useful for that. Make sure those values stack up, check all the possible uses that kind of sit alongside all of that. Remembering what commercial requirements are out can be really, really useful as well. We can back to back this stuff. Um, so knowing who the local developers are, the local investors um, can be really useful for all that too. And I suppose the, the final point is if we're looking at a particular area and we haven't got comps that support the values that we're looking at, then if the comps aren't there, then is the scheme really the right one? It's, it's a big thing that I sort of talk about a lot is if, if, if we're converting into flats and there are no flats being sold near that building, then is that the right scheme? And Andrew and I have 
various debates about kind of what that what that view is and whether whether it's a, you don't do it at all or whether you just kind of think more carefully about it we sort of have different we'll see if we can kind of sweat that out today in terms of um in terms of kind of uh, where the audience stands. So sorry again that's where we get a good example and then we can uh, absolutely we'll try and bring that to life bring our yeah. our our sort of um difference of opinion to light hopefully final things then just about kind of planning obviously Hitting headlines first is really useful, making sure things don't flood, not on the green belt, all that kind of stuff, um, and getting that all kind of boxed off before we start. As I say, a good design team will work their way in gold as part of this. They will work with um, the local active developers. They'll know sort of locally, they'll know the planners, they'll know that local marketplace. They'll be able to recommend others on the sort of a, a, a decent design team they've worked, on, in, worked in as part of elsewhere. So getting a good architect, for example, will then bring you in a decent QS, a decent um, uh, M&E consultant, structure engineer, and this sort of stuff. So you sort of pull them together off similar schemes elsewhere, in effect. And of course, if they're active in that particular sector as well, then of course, they'll know the right standards to be designing to. That will help them maximize the densities and therefore your GDVs will go up and, and, and be at the right level as part of that. And of course, they'll typically then get consents as proposed rather than you go forward on one particular scheme and then re resubmitting with a, a much lower density scheme as part of that. So, so those I thought were kind of useful just at the start of today to give us a, a sort of a background around what we're talking about today. Um, and what I'd like to do now is just jump straight into the, the deals clinic, quite frankly. Um, so let's just sort of have a look at this. We've got a, a few questions that have been raised um, before the event. Um, Andrew, have we got? Um, let's just bring the the questions up that we've had had raised with us, and um, if you want to kind of cross reference that with with who's on today as well. So, um, yeah. which one wants to kind of pick up? I think um, I've just been trying to sort of have a scan down that list. I can see um, Carl is here, um, who asked about a potential um, resi conversion that would like guidance on how to properly assess it. This one's in in love to it. So I don't know the the you want to highlight the particular um opportunity this is um carl i did see your name somewhere yeah, should we see it's a carl mooney i think is who you're talking about should we just see if carl can um carl are you there can we um invite you to come up here to talk if um if that's okay perhaps try and just ask you to unmute yourself sure, hey, carl, you how you doing all right hey can you hear me okay yeah fabulous yeah, yeah. how you getting on good thank you yeah good Amazing. So yeah, this is a property that came onto the market a short while ago. It's it's literally up the road from me. It's currently uh, an office and a workshop used by a, a office refitters. They're moving out. Um, on the face of it, it looks uh, like great art pits on a on a street that's got mixed commercial and and, and residential. Uh, large block of resi flats right next to it. Um, on street parking. Uh, I think the only issues I, I can detect are uh, access to, to the back is um, through a, a, an, a, an adjoining property where there's restricted access. Uh, in total, it's currently about two and a half thousand square feet with planning permission to add a, an extension on the back um, and take it to about 2,800 feet. It's pretty open plan on the ground floor and offices on the top floor. And, well, uh, have you got an address for that? And we'll get, um, perhaps Andrew, do you want to jump into the platform and... Um... We'll just kind of get yeah. our get our bearings on this. Yeah, sure. It, it's called Keyshell House, K E Y K E Y S H E L, and it's on uh, Keyshell House on Bank Street, and that's L E seventeen four A G. Uh, hopefully, this should find it. So, if it's on the market, then hopefully we should see it. Um, with the ear marker as well. I was just having a quick look while we were uh, while we were talking. Uh, so it looks like oh, maybe it was the one I just clicked. Is it this one in here? Uh, it is. Uh, it's it's. Keyshell House. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. I think this is it here. Yeah, Keyshell House. Um, so they're looking for offers in the region of 295 um, for essentially a conversion of this particular thing. So let's just have a quick look. This is here. So each party to bear their own costs, all of this kind of stuff. Right. So first things first, I mean, I think what's quite interesting, yeah, it'd be worth having a look at the planning on this. Um, 
just to understand what it is they've got planning for. Shall we put a little spot on move it to this one? First floor extension. Hmm. Surprised it's not. Um... Which building is it, Andrew? Ah, it looks like it's this one here, unregistered. Maybe it's it's the it's the uh, the L-shaped one with the white dot on it. That's that one there. Ah, right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So let's just have a quick look. Then. Austin Trustees Limited. That's the one, isn't it? Don't buy them, I think. Two thousand four hundred fifty-five square feet off the rate assessment. Two pounds twenty to a foot. Um, Paid two hundred and forty grand for it in twenty eighteen. Yeah, it's this, it's this one here. It's in a different colour. They've clearly painted the front. Um, this one here, and like you say, so it is quite residential on the street. Although you're seeing there's some mixed use on here as well. Yeah, there's a couple of offices. I mean, in fact, the agent, the agent you're selling is opposite, literally opposite. Uh, but but there's a block of flats next to it. Not listed yeah. on the floods, not on the green belt. It's yeah. useful, isn't it? So let's have a look then. So if we pull up, just for the benefit of everyone else, because I can see you're obviously um, looking at it as well. So first off, obviously, we, with the info panel, we can see who owns it. We can obviously do a bit of further investigation into those uh, people here, cost and trustees, obviously based down in Bristol. But ultimately, then we're trying to get a feel for, well, there's, there's two elements for me, really, in terms of, one, I've got to understand what that planning permission is doing. Two, you know, what the timeframes are around it, because ultimately, um, if it's just because it's got planning, doesn't necessarily mean, I suppose it was in 2020. All right, okay, so there's a bit of time on that one. I'm just thinking if it was, say, two years ago, the time is, the clock is ticking on, on whether the, uh, you'll be able to implement that application. But... So that's fine. We've got plenty of time on the planning application. Then I'd be looking at trying to understand its existing use value and just get a bit of a feel for how much it's worth right now versus then what their potential sort of hold value is. They've obviously put a price on at 295. How sort of optimistic is that right now before we then start looking at, well, if we turned it into flats, if we turned it into a house, if we turned it into whatever, because there are obviously multiple different ways of just appraising that site. So for me, you know, looking at this, so they're paying five, five and a half a year. Um, I am going to crudely 15. Is that probably a bit much? Um, use a 15 multiplier just to sort of get a feel for what it would be as a capital value. Mm. Um, this is the thing. I think it's, um, it's pretty expensive for what it is. It's, it's my kind of, Mm. overwhelming feeling so um if you kind of think about it so around and so well actually what are the sales values in the area and then what can you afford to pay per square foot for a building in that location it's interestingly it's come up as um in fact, can i just take over Andrew? let me just kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff i've been playing around with if that's okay and, um while you've been talking so um what i've got on here is i've got two things on. i've got the um the strategies commercial residential strategy on so i thought i'd kind of interesting to see whether the Nimbus thought it was an opportunity. Actually, it has come back as that under the under the um, the, the the commercial residential, which is the sort of strategy number one in effect. And that comes back saying there's a profit in there. But what's kind of interesting is that the the value of that building from the rate assessment is two pounds twenty nine. So so you know the rate assessment is not the rent, but it's what district value I thought it was back in the rent was back in 2015 in effect. So sort of the district value I thought it was. Or kind of would now think is worth about three quid a foot's worth of rent and of course that building then is is two and a half thousand square feet so it's kind of you know it's seven to ten thousand pounds worth of rent in its existing use which then if we applied eight percent necessary yield to that we're kind of hundred quid a foot sort of level um so it's not kind of huge numbers we've kind of put you at sort of 240 grand 250 grand for for the building as it currently stands yeah i think that's kind of Apologies, I think I've got my maths wrong, haven't I? So, so we've got, it's sort of saying three quid a foot, it's saying 7,000, which would then say that the value of the building is about 100 grand rather than sort of 250,000. That's kind of sort of the, the bit that's going through my head. It sort of seems pretty expensive in terms of that sort of price that they're, that they're quoting for it. 
when I sort of then started to look around on the availability, there's the, the details of the building itself. And if we sort of go and look at the sort of the inside of it, it's a it's a warehouse. It's kind of it's a sort of got a, a sort of a frontage to it. But then the, the, the where's the so sort of the images of inside. So it's not a sort of like a clean and tidy office, but there's parts of it that are office space, but it's not a sort of clean and tidy office in effect. And then when you sort of look in the center of town over here, you know, what does what does hundred pounds a foot look like in um, or kind of more than that? Because it's quoting sort of 295, we're 120, 130 pounds a foot in effect. Well, these little suites to let um, just over the road here are, um, a quoting about ten pound a foot, I think that was what um, that was not the one that I clicked a minute ago. Which one did I click a minute ago? Was it this one? There we go. So that's sort of three thousand pounds a year for a two hundred twenty six square foot unit. So you know twelve thirteen pounds a foot kind of um, kind of value. So I, and of course these then are much tidier. It's kind of a much neater neater building than the one we've got. So I wasn't necessarily convinced that the value was was quite up at that level frankly and if you then sort of flip on its head and say well actually if we were looking at um this particular location average sales price for residential we're going to convert it into a 240 pounds a foot mm -hmm. so if we then start to break that back and say well what's the the sort of the, the gross development value in that location probably then is near a sort of 300 quid it's usually sort of about 20 percent above the average sales prices so this here if i just kind of zoom out and explain what i'm doing here this is the average sales prices across Lutterworth, um, this is kind of a, a neighbourhood boundary the system's plotting, and it's saying, well, if you look at all this, the properties that have sold across that area and then divide them by the sizes, you get an average of £238 a foot. So that usually is kind of 20% below what your GDV would be on that on that site. So if we add, um, you know, maybe sort of 270, 280, 290 a foot's worth of sales values, we're going to want... A quarter of, of that value in profit and finance costs. So we, if we say it's three hundred quid, we're going to knock off um, we're going to knock off seventy five pounds a foot off that. So we'd be sort of two twenty five. Knock off a conversion cost of maybe hundred quid, but one twenty five a foot. Um, we've got two and a half thousand square feet. So we're sort of we're sort of there, aren't we? So one twenty five a foot times two and a half thousand square feet. It sort of stacks up, doesn't it? It does sort of stack up. On my maths, I think, yeah, I'm only getting to about 250, 255, um, mm. just on the crude figures, I think, unless you did a detailed set of comps, just to understand, well, I think, yeah, you'd have to price it up and say, well, look, if we're going to get, well, I think with the extra planning, it's an extra 430 square feet of space, that takes it to pretty mm. much 300,000. Um, then... 300,000, you know, like I say, better getting sort of 250 pound a square foot, you know, you'd think maybe six one bed flats or something. Um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. What's actually interesting, Andrew, just looking at this, is that you've got, um, so it's coming up on the Class ZA strategy. So Class ZA says you knock it down and rebuild it. So B1, the old B1 uses that now form part of Class E, you can knock them down and rebuild them as, as flats with two stories on top off the same footprint. Mm -hmm. So actually you could go, potentially higher with that because you've got the um class ma and actually you've got some height over the road as well haven't you so it's they actually you kind of use the class z ap rights to go um two stories on top that would then make it stack up because yeah well to be honest i think that's probably why it's five hundred thousand. If, if i like to say if I, looking at the the area that it's got at the moment I can get to about sort of 250 ish you know obviously you know we'll need to sort of do some more work to understand exactly but 250,000 as a sort of value well if you add an additional two stories to that you're effectively doubling that area and therefore you know doubling the potential profit to be made so I think mm -hmm. it's quite interesting what's what this is showing is this is the elite plus system so the elite plus system here and the strategy number one that's class at a so this is the the airspace included in the opportunity in effect so you could put two stories on top of it and the system then coming back and saying this stacks up to convert in effect yeah. what's kind of interesting is when you go to the low value commercial buildings in the area it doesn't bring it back and it's saying it doesn't stack up for that because actually it's too marginal which is kind of where we're sort of getting to 300 grand seems like quite a lot of money for that for that yeah. building okay very useful thank you quite interesting yeah. quite interesting um quite interesting i think it's so, a, 
we got anything else we want to? I suppose the only thing kind of going through my head is: is there anything in the um, in the comparables that we can just perhaps have a look at? So we've got the. If I just do the residential comparables um, across this, this is showing all the properties that have sold. Let's get rid of the emotion of pins for now. These are all the properties that have sold. Not a huge number of properties that have sold, frankly. Um, if we put those into Excel, then this will. There's the there's the questions from today. Let me get rid of that. Um, so there's sort of 290, 275. There is a 330 back from 2019, but um, it was certainly seen that sort of 280, 290 a foot is about the right kind of number. Sort of, you know, I suppose, isn't it? Sort of 280 a foot, something like that. Um, those are houses rather than flats. I mean, there's our there's our discussion, Andrew, of whether it is flats or not. I think here we'll let you we'll let you off with that, but I think there's not my, not many flats that are um, that are being shown around there, are there? Well, I think, like you say, is that, you know, and what's the rental yield as well? So then, you know, another option is then, you know, I think you just could work through the, the different potential outputs and say, well, if, we, if it was a rental, what could then, you know, what could we rent it for? What kind of yield could we get? Um, yeah, yeah. And then... Because there is that question of, is there an HMO? I suspect there isn't an HMO marketplace. Let's have a little check, see if there is. Yeah. I suppose if you... Well, there's one there. One. No. Um, I think one doesn't... Doesn't um, justify an HMO marketplace, does it? Like, um, Commute it down into whatever that is, rugby. Rugby, yeah. Rugby and Leicester, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think you might struggle. I think, I think you probably you could get away with flats. I mean, to, you know, you know, look at the rentals. You know, for flats in the area, what's that? Um, you know, are there a lot of flats on the market just sat there, or um, is there not many? I don't like it. Oh yeah. Um, mm. But then, like you say, with that kind of building, this is the argument that Andrew and I have regularly, right? Is that um, let's just kind of let's air our dirty laundry, Andrew. So, so the the question is, like, if if you run your um, your residential comps in that area, and we found there's one flat that's sold in the last two years within two meters of that location, then is it right to build flats in that location? Because for me, I can't prove what that marketplace is. Is there actually a marketplace for flats in Lutterworth or not? Don't know. If I build some, will I let them? Probably. Will I sell them? Probably. But at what price? And so in a past life, Andrew, you would have said, well, what's the quality of Lutterworth relative to somewhere else? Kind of look at that marketplace in more detail and kind of come to a conclusion about whether it's the right thing to, to build or not. Um, is, yeah. that, is that right? Or, I'm yeah, yeah. You, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, so like I say, you know, if we were, say, you know, doing a larger scheme here and, and, you know, we had to have, say, flats as part of that housing mix, then um, the one thing you would do is then say, well, what are flats in rugby then where there's maybe more flats? And then obviously then what do we think the value difference is between the two? So if rugby's £300 a square foot and not with 240 you know, then saying, right, okay, there's a 20% difference, therefore then we'll apply the 20% difference to price of flats in rugby versus um versus lots of work that's what this is showing here in effect so there's your there's your sales price in rugby there's your sales price in lots of so if you work out what your sales you know your residential values are there and you say well that's 20 percent higher or whatever then or, in this instance you know, they're close enough i just wonder if you could arguably just do the same you know i think i think what you'll find is is there probably will be people in lots who are probably priced out and people's kids and all that kind of stuff that are struggling to get on the on the ladder and actually probably a set of flats there you know probably would be a decent scheme um i think with that building i think you know if, you, if you're not going flats the house doesn't really lend itself i mean three thousand square feet in a 240 pound a square foot area doesn't lend itself to then creating that mega mansion you know you're going to be so few and far between the number of people who want a three thousand square foot mansion house um and on that kind of street it doesn't really lend itself to it anyway does it so i think your options then are knocking it down and maybe building something in its place so then you've got to factor mm. in you know, your bill cost is going to go up because now you're factoring in sort of knocking down um, the opportunity as well, which isn't huge amounts, but, you know, sort of tens of thousands, certainly for something of 3,000 square feet. Um, but then, you, then you've got a, a blank plate then in terms of, you know, what you can do, or how much you can squeeze on that. But I think the class that day, I think, is, is, a, is arguably the best opportunity, really, because then, you, you know, then you're going up four storeys as opposed to if you go for housing, you'll probably only go up to three, you know, or sort of two with two, you know, two and a half stories or something. 
Um, so you're just you're not going to generate the same level of square footage that I think you would with a block of flats. And then I think, like you say, it's just going to be careful then pricing it in that marketplace, which is difficult. I know that was one of the other questions. How do we price up a piece of land in the, in the middle of nowhere? Well, it's a dark art around trying to sort of go, well, you know, if we think, you know, the town over, over there is 10% better, then, you know, we'll, we'll assume those prices, but drop 10% off. Or you yeah. get a higher margin, you know, so, that, you know, I think... Um, you know, we've always done that in the past. If it's if it's in a slightly new area, um, then then we'll we'll allow a slightly higher margin. And I'm not talking huge amounts, another half a percent or another percent in that initial round, just to sort of see, well, let's see where we stand. You know, and if we're in the mix, then then we know we can pretty much make it stack up, or we might think we've overcooked it. But um, you know, I think that's where you just you're just building up your own um essentially sort of reserves in case all of a sudden it does take a bit longer to sell them or you end up having to flip them onto an investor at a discount or something we have you've, you've assumed you're going to make a higher margin on it and therefore you might come back to to that standard margin in time yeah okay. well, I think my um I feel slightly lukewarm is the, is the answer there's three yeah. flats that sold within 500 meters of the of the place in the last two years um and those flats that have sold are kind of at lower values as well. So sort of 220 a foot and 198 pounds a foot. So we're sort of saying exit value is sort of 280. But of course, the only comps we've got for flats are, are below that. Mm -hmm. um, my immediate reaction is that then, as you say, kind of that the, the class ZA says knock it down and rebuild its flats um, with two stories on top. That's kind of what that strategy they're saying. The system saying that the low value commercial residential area, which is kind of a straight conversion calculation, is saying doesn't really stack up, sales values aren't really high enough relative to what is there. And it sort of feels quite expensive as a building when it's got a rate of £2.90 a foot, you're paying 130 quid a foot, um, 120 foot, whatever that, that sort of um, you know, 300 grand for two and a half thousand feet feels pretty punching. Yep. So, mm -hmm. sort of not sure about the marketplace it's going into, I'm not sure it's the right price to buy it. There is class ZA that might kind of bail you out, but do I like flats in that location? Not quite sure. Um, do I fancy a block, a four-story block of flats in that location? Not really sure. Uh, I might take a shot with upwards in that location. <laughs> Probably a bit easier. Um, but um, so I might yeah, yeah, yeah. class G instead in in central Lutterworth instead. Um, but and perhaps a bit of class M at the back of some of those, or perhaps MA um, of some of that as well. But that would seem a much simpler strategy than um, than that one. I would certainly, I'd, I'd speak to the agent and understand understands, you know, what's driving their value, you know, because ultimately, you know, it's equating back to more or less hundred pound a square foot in a 240 pound a square foot area, you know, so then it's, you know, and that's the, that's the highest level use. You know, I'd, I'd be surprised if any of the commercial uses are generating 240 pound a square foot. So, you know, that's only leaving you 140 pound a square foot bill cost um, in between what they're quoting and, and, and what you can get away with. So they obviously feel there's a, you know, there's something else that's going to drive that value. Maybe they're aware of, of class today and you'd like to think they are. And maybe they think that's what's going to sort of generate the extra value. But and it's going all on, or onto the landowner. You know, you want to keep a bit for yourself. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And there's one final thing that I'm very tempted to do, which is just to look. So looking at so Harbour covers the um, the location, um, the council, and if we do an office search for um, for that and export. Um, so this is going to do a planning export. It's going to look across Harbour Council for any applications that mention the word office. Um, so it's going to bring back any office schemes. I could do this residential, but in essence, what that's going to show us then is, is are there any planning applications to convert offices into residential? Because it'll pick up that office word that's sort of within the application in effect. Um, so is this a, a thing across Harborough Council? Um, Harborough cover... Uh, da -da -da. This area here. So it's a kind of a, a reasonably large patch that's going to kind of take us right out to. So maybe that's... Sort of less interesting, but it would also kind of show us who the right design team is for um, for that area. I suppose the other question is: so they've delivered 156% of their um, housing delivery test as well. 
So kind of they're, they're supposed to be delivering 1,400 houses in the year, it's in the last three years, and they've done two, well, 2,250. So 50% up on that. So there's no kind of pressure to provide us with a particularly racy application or anything like that. So um, let's bring up that, that planning export a second. Computer seems to be dying. There we go. There we go. Well, there's Chimney's office for dwelling. So, <laughs> the first one in the, is there. So, maybe there is a, a marketplace for that. Um, we could perhaps go and filter that over here. So, this is, so in effect, what this is showing us is kind of these are all the planning applications for offices. And then, um, number of units to talk about whether it's approved or not, um, kind of the date it went in, all that kind of stuff, um, link through to Nimbus, who the developers were. So, What's kind of going through my head was kind of is there a, an interesting developer there as well and kind of who are they then using in terms of what do they pay when do they buy it um could we pull any sort of comps out the back of that and say well actually you know here are three buildings that have converted in a similar area and kind of they paid this much per square foot um expect to kind of piece that together off the back of this here but equally you know who's the right architect to go and get in touch with to go and get a scheme drawn up well woods hardwick for example of are instructed by mulberry property developments on a, um, I guess an office conversion there, is it again? Um, it's actually more office above the uh, thing. So, so if we, if we sort of filter this down and look for where we see those kind of change of use from office to something else, um, doesn't seem to be a vast amount of that talking about resi, to be honest. Um, from residential to mixed use, that's going the other way. Um, a lot of it's kind of, I don't really feel like that's necessarily giving us a, a sort of huge confidence that we're going, everything's going from, again, um, doesn't really feel like there's a huge amount of conversion from office to residential. Um, lots of new offices, but not much. Um, in fact, again, house going to office there instead. So I, I'm not, not entirely convinced, to be honest. I'm sort of, my gut feeling about all this stuff is that when when these you kind of very rarely the first person to do a scheme in a particular location um there's usually a kind of a, a track record somewhere else in the town of someone else doing a similar kind of thing usually um and that's kind of not really showing me that in the um in that export mm. should we jump onto it is that, is that okay carl yeah that's perfect thank you for you. i really appreciate that very good i'm not sure we've been um giving you the, the fire well, path off and <laughs> submit an offer, but um, hopefully yeah. that's useful. I think, I think it's difficult to get that detail, isn't it? Across, a, you know, but, um, uh, and then, unless anyone's really shouting. Got, um, so the other thing you can do, so we've got other questions that we can we can run through. There's kind of a few questions around sort of PD rights and this sort of stuff we can kind of run through. Well, um, you, I don't know, is, is Jay here? I don't think Jay's here. would like to yeah. ask a question directly, then, in your control panel for Zoom, there's a little raise hand button. Um, if you click on that, then we can bring you up like we just done for Carl, and you can never sort of talk you through a, a, um, a particular site. A couple of questions in the Q and A, um, Andrew. Um, yeah, let's have a look at that. We've got a mixed use deal. I would love to go through with you guys to values. I'm trying to get the correct valuation for it. So that's probably a very similar um, exercise to what we've just done. Yeah. Um, the site I'm looking at appears to be ZA, but the obvious route forward accepts restricted access for the site. Um, uh, demolish the site and build three dwellings. Could it be easy to obtain permission to convert the existing premises to terraced units? Um, I, I would want to say, yeah, happy we could go into into either or of these, Paul. And if um, if someone wants to either Julia or Samida wants to provide a few more details, then we'll we'll leave it as a bit of a um, first come, first serve. If we provide, yeah, so if Julia wants to put a hand up or um, somebody wants to put a hand up as well, then we can jump onto those for you and answer those live. Um, equally, um, to be useful in, in Julia's questions, kind of see the site and understand that. Um, Samida, again, we could do with a similar sort of thing, just looking at um, values and sort of looking at, but we kind of need to know the location to go and search for that as well. So, in fact, let's just see if we can um, invite you to. Um, to chat, let's um, see if we can jump on. Um, 
the participants thing and see if we can, there we go. So Julia's put a hand up as is um, Samita, there we go. Let's get Julia on first. Hi, Julia. Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I've, I've got a site that I've been looking at for about a year now. Yep. I'm actually working with a vendor, yep. so it's not on the market, mm -hmm. um, but he's keen to work with us to try and maximise the value. It's yep. a disused um, storage work um, workshop sort of area where he used yep. to convert um, cars to mobility, so add mobility features onto it. It doesn't; it's not been used for that for some years. It's been empty yep. since 2019. Yeah. Um, they applied in 2014 to knock it down and put three dwellings on there, a pair yeah. of semis and a single detached. It got refused. Yeah. I've been trying to work out with him. I can't think why we can't do it. It's so on a, a road off, so it's on a close, which serves yes. this factory that's been there since 1906, um, yeah. plus four extra, um, as, no, five chalet bungalows. Yeah. So it's, but it's, there's no paved footpath going into that close. It's just a road that goes in and it's yeah. a single track road. Yeah. So I think one of the challenges of the 2014 um, a, a, a submission was that the highways might have an issue with it. So I've tried to look at this and I thought, well, can we not knock this down? Can we rebuild it as one unit and divide it into flats, which is what I wanted to do. And that, that way we can get the value up to nearly 1.4 million um, yeah. out of it um but I, I spoke to somebody and they kind of said walk away walk away and I, i'm still sitting here thinking there must be something we can do with this site it's mm -hmm. in the middle of a whole residential area right near the village center um it would be brilliant for residential use um it's never really going to work as a factory again or a, a, a warehouse or anything like that because the access is there and I, yeah. otherwise he's got this site do you, want, do you want the address or anything with that help to go through? Yeah, yeah. If you're okay um, sharing the address, I'm just conscious that you've got, there's a, an audience on as well. So if it's kind of a, a discreet off-market opportunity, you might not want to give us the address. But um, sort of the stuff, happy to do that if you, if you have for us to look at that. I guess if you're thinking of walking away, then we're delighted to do that for you. But equally... Okay, well, then, um, I'll give you the postcode. Nobody else go in for this because <laughs> hopefully yeah, yeah, you're working quite strongly with this. Um, yep. The postcode is HP15. Yeah. Six S U Sugar Uniform. Cool. And it's number thirty-two. Cool. So let's just find those two for a second. And I'm just trying to find a way forward with him to see what we can do with it because I can't believe there's nothing that we can do. It's up here, is it? It's up this street here. Is that is that there? Is it? I can't see what you're, you're not sharing the screen oh, at the moment. <laughs> that often helps. That often helps. That often helps. Um. It's this, this building here. Yes, it's, it's that it's building kind of there. That's there it. And, and yeah. There. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Because what was going to my head was, is there scope to do something with this? So is there, is there scope to improve the road? Um, well, the... Kind of interesting. Yeah. Sorry, what that's the access through, you see. Yeah, yeah. So it is and quite that's narrow, the village hall next to it. So... So... Well, I think then you'd kind of four meters, isn't it? It's private drive, can't remember the width of a private drive is, but it's less than four meters, I think, isn't it? So it's, I think it's wide enough for private drive because you can get, is it six units off it? But there's already a bunch, there's already one, two, three, you say there's already five. I think there's five there. accessed off it, yeah. Mm. Which point you might be then looking at just a sort of bigger house. Um, I think it's, it might even be just be five um from five them. to a drive i always thought it was yeah five then, drive, okay so you've got yeah you've got i mean it's one of the issues around you know fire hose distances bin lorry distances but I imagine they all drop their bins on new pond road um and you've got houses which are further down the lane than what this would be i yeah i mean i think oh, it's a conversation. To be honest, you could have a, a pre-app with the with the planners. Yeah. And just to say, look, are they, would they entertain any more than one dwelling on there? Um, and you know, and I think it's pre-app, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it's walking distance to all the village shops. It's walking distance to everything in the village. It's an anomaly that it's a an industrial unit. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's but I, mean, yeah. I, I know I could get yeah. one house on, but the numbers just don't stack up for one house. This sort of thing is it's kind of point two of an acre, isn't it? So, you know, a couple of, it's kind of a sort of triangular wedge shape, isn't it? So, you know, yeah. the two units is going to be going, you're going to be doing quite well to get two units on it, aren't you really? Um, you might get two of those on, might you? You might sort of get, sort of, perhaps not quite two, but. Um, uh, you could, I think you could, it's doable, I think, you know, with the right mm. architect. I think, you know, this is where then you want to work with a good architect. Yeah. You can then design your nice scheme with two units in there. You probably wouldn't get too big detached, uh, the value of too big detached. Um, and it might be a pair of semi, you know, a little pair of semis in there or something with sort of parking in the triangular bit at the front. Um, but I think, yeah, that's where I'm guessing, you know, like you say, you've got a landowner who's got obviously aspirations around value. Yeah, for me, I think I think it's just you either get spec a little bit on a on a highways consultant just to give you a bit of a, a feel, you know, what what we could safely get the maximum off that off that driveway, and get that opinion and go and sit and have a pre app with the council to say we've got an opinion here which says we can have two units, three units. Um, you know, what have you got to do to support us in this application? Or what have we got to do for you to support us in this application? Right. Mm. Interesting, it seems that like the Google car's been able to go down there. But there's no Quite interesting in terms of, you know, you've got 5,000 feet of built space on there. Yeah. Um, which is kind of quite interesting when it comes to, your, you know, repurposing that for Resi. It's going to be under the new um, class um, MAPD rights to convert. You just want to convert that, but you know you, you convert it to the use and then kind of do something else with it. Um, so I think it's very interesting. It's just about the axe, isn't it? It's just about who's the right um, the right person for that. So again, you can use the planning export. So what's also going through my head is kind of you know what are plot values in the area, um, and and sort of looking at that. So we sort of we can have a look at the. Um, at says Buckinghamshire is the council, and they interesting, interesting. They are an action plan. They've got eighty nine percent of their housing targets delivered, so they are under some pressure, not huge pressure, but some pressure to mm. um, hit their housing targets. So it'd be a nice little windfall site, so wouldn't it? If they could, if they could do something with it. Yeah, I, I imagine it's the kind of thing that's going to get no objections. You know, I don't know whether mm. there, was, there was a particular was a use in the past, but you know, I mean, obviously, probably these four bungalows to the sort of north um, east there, they'll they'll probably complain, but you know, you'll you'll always get someone. But I think well, nothing. they're all two story houses. Those yeah, ones. they're kind of the front there, aren't they? Yeah, the that lot there is just in yeah. behind these, in effect. But they're looking out over a tin roof of a building at the moment. I mean, it, it's not an attractive building as it stands. Um, about no, I, 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 I was going to engage with them, but I know that Ben, you've got the distance, haven't you, from, mm, sort of, from where they are? Yeah, but you're, like, you're, kind of you're side on, though. So side on, I think you can get away with. I mean, I don't know what the policy is in Buckingham, but um, but it's it's only about twelve meters or something. Side on, so um, I think you've just got to put two units. Then you then you've got your unit at the back there. I mean, it's yeah. I think this is like I say, you work you work with a good architect who can try and get you a couple of units in there. I would then speak to a highways consultant who can give you an opinion to say it's safe to have six six access points off there or something um, coming off this little private access. Yeah. And then I go and have a pre app with the council and say, look, this okay. is do or die. You know, otherwise, I think like you say, you go well. Look, it could be class MA in the future. Mm. Um, but with class MA, they still yeah they still refuse like it, can't they? Because of access, that's that's, yeah. that's the challenge, isn't it? Yeah. So I think yeah, I think you've Design. got to. I mean, basically, what someone should have done is when they did like the scheme just to the west, is try to buy out this particular person here at that point, or try to maintain a bit of a reserve and access or something to. Um, to back to that in in the future, but clearly this person said no many times in the past. Um, yeah, you've got you've got some like um, mass reports that could be useful. 
So they would do you a very quick sort of massing study, look at policy for you. Right. Um, yeah. so this is the sort of button on the bottom left hand corner of of um, of Nimbus that would take you through that. Okay. That might be a so down here you can just request a, a quick report from them. Like the policy one's about 150 quid, I think. Um, so these are the, the things you can re request off them here and the, the reports okay. they do are like a little policy report is kind of what you're interested in, isn't it? Um, you could do a massing study with them, sort of 350. That would then let you put your pre-app in and say, well, this is what I'm kind of thinking you're doing. Um, are we are we right in what we're thinking there? And um, off we go. Yeah. It's all about what you can get on the site, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think that needs some some detailed advice, isn't it? Decent architect would be useful. Um, or equally just a, a bit of a pre-app, um, just to see what the policy officer would think would be useful. So you could kind of do that off a, you know, you could, to be honest, you could just do a um, standard pre-app, couldn't you really? Or submit that with it and um, that would be kind of useful. Yeah, I think I think it would be, it'd be, it'd be useful to have a little block plan or something, you know, you know, get an architect to just sketch out a little block plan or something and just say, well, look, this is what we're thinking. You know, you, you know, the two units would work and this is how it would sort of roughly sort of sit on the site. Um, you know, just with a, maybe a couple of those little like, separation distances to the surrounding plots. Um, and then, um, and I think, yeah, you've just got to see, you know, see what you can get away with. But I mean, to be honest, the interesting thing, I'm just running a comps report here on, on there is if you're saying it doesn't work for one, the problem you've got is there's only so much space you could actually develop on that site. Yeah. You know, if you've either got one, let's call it, I don't know what values are in this area, half a million pound house or two, you know, yeah, two, 300,000 pound houses or something, you know, so it's, it's just doing a quick exercise to see you're not going to get two semi two plots, the size that you could get as that one plot and therefore you know does it command slightly higher value it's it's not going to double the, the land value by putting two plots on there because you can't get yeah, two yeah. full size plots but um so i would question if you if you're really struggling to make it stack up in one plot squeezing a set you know squeezing that into two plots isn't going to make a lot of difference you know it might be a case of saying look it's going to be one plot it's going to be a high spec if you know, wherever this is, Holmes Green is a is a really nice. I mean, five hundred pound a square foot. Like I think you could really command. You know, with a good spec, maybe you could be getting closer to six hundred pound a square foot. Um, you know, I'm sure it's, it feels probably quite a nice little private drive. You know, very well to do little um, enclave of little houses. You know, you, you could, if you really drive that spec, you might get it back in the revenues and therefore um, try and drive a bit more extra land value out of it to make it work for the landowner or or maybe like you say work with the landowner and say well let's do it together and let's just sell it for as much as we possibly can and we'll split the difference um but yeah they've got one about that kind of question of whether it's does it is there a flat scheme on it without parking but i don't you know is it a highly accessible location but i don't yeah. know whether that it's all about policy isn't it it's all about whether that access matters, you know, do you need parking in um, in this part of Buckingham? It's sort of down to policy, isn't it? I guess you probably yeah, do I work think, in I think areas. you do need parking if it becomes a, a house, but in terms of a, a, a park, I mean, they probably still want parking, to be honest. Mm. Um, and that's where your kind of policy is kind of going to be useful. It's kind of going to explain whether yeah. you need, um, need that parking or not. Well, I mean, if there is a bus, if it's a on a bus route, that road going down, which I mean, I suppose that road itself doesn't like there's any bus stops, but about 400 meters further down the pond the approach. Road is there's buses. Yeah, there's some there. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, you uh, you could argue it. I mean, you've got some good comps there actually with um, on that um, main road. Someone building looks like a pair of semis next to um, one of those plots, but. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, yeah that that would be my approach. I'd you know um, appreciate it's it's maybe spending a little bit of money or trying to sort of pull in a favour with an architect and a um, you know and then obviously paying a pre-app fee or something. But for the sake of you know four five hundred pound or something, um, you're going to get a a very good answer. Yes, I know as to whether it's going to generate something which is going to generate the value for the landowner. Yeah. And then you can then, you know, 
decide whether to continue down that road or, or, or walk away at that point, I would suggest. I think the values are really high here. So I think like yeah. I said, if you can get on there, it will it will generate a good value. Um, you just gotta, you know, we've got to understand exactly what we can get on. Yeah. Mm. About policy, isn't it? It's about policy. It's all about policy. Fabulous. Is that okay, Julia? Yeah, no, that's really helpful. Thank you very much. Fabulous. All right. Um, so we've got uh there's a few more i just want us to be um anastasia's got one there which is actually a postcode so if you want to put in BM. yeah i want to just invite anastasia up um just... anastasia can you hear us anastasia hi how are you doing Hello. fabulous right have we got a postcode andrew say it's, it's BN twenty one three UA. BN twenty one three three UA. Yeah. Um. Yep. Yeah. And then Which it's one was it? Off market. Well, I was going to say, do you want to maybe get us a bit closer? Or you are saying this is off market, so maybe. Um, I don't really want to just sort of talk more generally. If you want us to do a more general sort of valuing up a property in this area, then. Um, okay. Yeah, cool. Um, market. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess kind of first thing is looking at um, comps and quoting prices, isn't it, really? So um, I suppose the first thing you look at is the is commercial availability and to see, what, see what's on the market. Something up there that's on the market. Oops, apologies. Let's bring um, some after there, that'll little pin there so you've got some that's land available um property there on the market with um with the government um let's just go straight into the commercial uh, sorry commercial comps i think is probably the, the simplest thing to do let's do that and let's just put that in a nice big broad area and click apply because we're in a sort of a fairly residential part of um of eastbourne aren't we something like that run itself so these are all the little kind of commercial buildings that have that have sold nearby um so it's not knowing what the building is and, and how we might kind of break that back but it's, it is showing us the sort of various bits and pieces that have sold um nearby so depending on what you've got the little kind of store that sold there which was 1500 square feet or whatever um if that's any part of it sold which was um 116 pounds a foot um what I tend to do is sort of look at this rate per square foot as part of that and just check against the building that you're looking at that they're kind of comparable so that you know, this is saying five quid and the one you're looking at is saying five or something like that. Um, so I could, we could use that. You kind of work around depending on kind of what the, what the commercial space is you're looking at. And I'm sort of conscious that there's um, element of sensitivity around that in terms of what you're looking at and what you're, um, what you're going after. But again, you know, 500 square feet there that's sold um and sort of the prices that, that sit against that as well so um that was 110 that sold 215 grand and that was um what that one looked like so kind of there's various bits and pieces that you kind of look at around that um again kind of a you know, much bigger lump so depending on what it is you're looking at there's a 32,000 foot unit there that sold um you might have to buy in the case of this you might have to buy the type of register to go and get the details of that but that would then give you some rates per square foot to look at this is a kind of much cheaper building, so much less, um, I suppose, in less good condition, if you like. But sort of depending on what kind of commercial it is you're looking at, then um, the sort of various bits and pieces that would kind of give you that steer, the pub there that sold, and um, the one is, let's have a look. Um, again, another pub that sold as well. So I think you could, you could look at that. The other thing you could be looking at is um, sort of the availability. So depending on what kind of building you're looking at, what, what the kind of building is you're looking at. You could look around on the availability and just find some stuff that's similar. Um, that would give you some quoting rents and quoting sale prices as well. Um, and also, dare I say it, kind of a, a local agent that's perhaps active in that area as well. So somebody's gonna have a conversation with to say, um, got this building over here, it's sort of, you know, I believe it rents for X, perhaps the, the, the freehold has told you what the rent was. You can use the, the size off the, um, information panel on Nimbus to go and see kind of what the size of that was. So I believe it's renting for about five pound a foot, ten pound a foot, fifteen, twenty pound a foot, whatever that is. Excuse me, it is a 
shared warehouse, office, whatever that might be. Um, and these little kind of pins here would just sort of help you sort of see who they, who's kind of important, you know, who the, who the, the local active agents are. So this is Mike Frank letting a pretty reasonably prime um, retail unit. Um, equally up here, there's presumably, you know, um, that's gov.uk, it's off their websites, they're more agents, they're more um, just government selling stuff. Um, but sort of you can look around this area and sort of see, you know, perhaps the more fringe stuff. So there's um, Styles Harold Williams are, are acting on something here, three to five, um, Susan's Road. And, and so you sort of quite quickly get a list of, you know, Max Perkin might be an interesting person to have a chat to, sort of development surveyor, um, sort of with that sort of resi angle on it. And so that's a scheme that he's selling at the moment with, well, there you go, a little, little parade of, um, of, of houses they're putting on that, I suspect. So oh, this is flat bar, I don't know. Um, does, that, does that kind of make sense then? So does that sort of without a bit more information about the particular building, it's um, sort of slightly tricky to tell you sort of to, to, to know the size and a sort of a bit more detail. It's quite tricky to go into much more detail, but you can use the commercial comparables, the commercial availability, um, that would give you that equally. Um, if you need a, a local surveyor to get in touch with, I would sort of have a little dig around in terms of the, um, the availability and just sort of see who's doing what in that area. And you perhaps kind of have a, Sort of a quiet conversation with them about what the what the price of that building is and what the building is and and sort of that that pitch i suppose to someone like max perkins is going to be um you know i'm going to buy this building um trying to do a deal with this, this owner or whatever um and when i do that deal i need some bank finance some bank finance i'm going to bring some investors on board or whatever that might be um so i'll need a formal valuation as part of that and obviously once i've then built this stuff out i'm going to have to sell this thing um, so actually, maybe you guys could do the, the valuation for me. I'll give you the valuation if you give me a bit of bit of a des bit of desktop advice at the moment, just about what it's what it's worth. Um, they would often kind of give you that that advice, especially if you sort of talk about the other stuff you're doing as well at the same time and what these other plans to do this, this, and this. And um, they would usually kind of give you that 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 advice, really. Does that make sense? Is that, is that helpful? Yes, thank you very much. Chris. Just while you were talking there, Paul, I was just going to see if there was any um, land comps on the planning export, but there doesn't seem to be anything in that in that area um, for that. So yeah, I was going to say that's the other option there as well. It's just taking the, the the planning export for that area and just look, trying to understand a few land comps for these conversions as well. And you'll see, you know, if we just look at Eastbourne, there'll be a there'll be a few. Um, examples there although i'm just trying to look um and see i think i've i found one of your schemes anastasia to be honest but um but yeah I'm, I'm sure there's others in there as well that we can then um uh then look up and try and get a feel for for what other people are paying for for similar types of opportunities it's all in that planning export for you there yeah yeah that's kind of i suppose the the other end of what i, I sort of demonstrated a moment ago which is that um, you know, if you do do that planning export for Eastbourne, whichever council covers is it Eastbourne that covers Eastbourne, so Brighton and Hove. Yeah, yeah, Eastbourne, yeah. Um, so if you run the, um, the search against um, Eastbourne with residential opportunities button click, it's going to show you all the residential applications. And that's going to include the conversion of something to residential, which then gives you that. So as Andrew's looking for at the moment, kind of what are they, mm. what are those schemes that have gone forward? Um, and then I guess that then you can kind of look at well, what's the proposed number of units on that scheme? What was the purchase price at the back of that? And then that's going to give you a, a sort of a, a plot value you can then apply to the building you're looking at. Um, I guess what you're saying, Andrew, isn't it really in terms of that? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think, yeah, the only, the only sort of real things that I've saw in the last couple of years really that's coming up is, yeah, sort of change of use into 15 self-contained flats, um, prime approval into one, on one dwelling. But um, look, it either seems like it's, you know, multiple millions or um, or eighty thousand. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it might be tricky. Yeah, that fifteen is there. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's kind of interesting, though, isn't it? So, in terms of this is again the planning export here. If this time um, running for the residential opportunities across Eastbourne, um, so there's your list of all those sort of recent planning applications from you know early earlier this month. In effect, is the kind of most recent one. Sort of link through to the title where that's possible. And then what you can then do is say, well, it's just show me the stuff that's sold in the last few years in effect. So you've got this list then of a people here who are kind of typically actively local, you know, active locally in effect. Um, 
and then kind of what the schemes are they're submitting and, and sort of going forward with an effect. So um, residential entry is kind of not particularly interesting, but demonstrating some dwelling for three new um, units. And I suppose what you're looking for, Andrew, then is sort of that conversion of the there's upper upper three floors, three flats. There's probably a um, a, uh, a class G um, shop suppers kind of thing, isn't it? I suspect. Um, but that's kind of then giving you kind of who those active developers are in that area. And of course, what's kind of interesting perhaps as well with that is then sort of looking at who the um, the agent is that they've that they've been instructing in effect. So there's kind of a list of those those active local. Um, oh look, there you go. There is somebody there that's um, that's uh, appearing a few times on that um, on that list. And as I say, you're uh, we've we found you on the uh, on the planning export too. So um, hopefully that's um, interesting. Um, I suppose the other thing kind of interested perhaps with this is is then looking at the um, so I suppose you know is there an HMO marketplace as well that might be kind of interesting to think about which there seems to be um, so that might also be be kind of worth a worth considering um, in terms of that commercial vision and depending on which what type of commercial building it is obviously you know things like your, your class G shop stoppers upper parts conversions um, you can obviously bolt on the the, the class L um, uh, sort of conversion then from C3 to C4 or the end of that one. You can't do that with the new PD rights, but the old PD rights you can do and you can add that on. So your, your class G and class M for shop as you can convert then onwards from C3 into C4 under, under class L. Um, and obviously the, the old class O office to resi, you can also do the same thing on as well. So, um, so that might be worth thinking about as well as part of that. And you can then get your HMO comps as part of this and your um, which you do through your residential, ex residential value export as well. So kind of that extra that sort of final piece, of the jigsaw on this um, might be useful. I wonder if that's worth demonstrating, Andrew, as well as part of this, is just that, um, that residential value, um, the residential values in this area, and then, of course, the, um, the HMO mm -hmm. comps as well. So in fact, let's just quickly do that. So, so if we're sort of searching around here, then sort of the, the first thing is then kind of what are those sales values in the area? So we, we can look at the average sales prices, which aren't, as high as I thought, sort of 240 a foot for, for this part of, um, of, of Eastbourne. That's your average sales price. Perhaps the, you know, the, the, the GDV is slightly higher than that, perhaps 10, 20% higher than that. Um, but in essence, if we go into the filters and run the, um, the residential comparables rather than industrial comparables and apply those, that's then going to show us all the properties that have sold um, uh, around that area. You sort of see these little um, red... Uh, Bits and pieces. I'm going to get rid of the um, residential comparable. So the residential values overlay. So this is all the residential properties that have sold. Um, if we then drop those into Excel, what it will also do is then show us where those are HMOs. So we've then got kind of this this picture of all residential values of these, HMO values of those, and that will kind of also kind of help you understand what the residual values might drive out of your out of your scheme might be as well. Just give that a second just to open up. So there we go. So there's your list of, of everything that's that's sold in effect. And what we should hopefully see is just the odd HMO that's also sold as part of that. So um, here we've got rather more going on than the last two examples. Um, but then if we want to see just the HMOs, then there they all are there. Um, and some of this, they then sometimes have the, um, the number of rooms in the HMO register. So yes, yeah, so we can sort of see 11 beds. HMO sold there for 365 grand. There was a five bed there for 300, uh, six bed there for 250. And you can sort of see whether they were sold as HMOs or not. So if the license date is before the sales date, then, um, then that's usually the case. You can see here, this one actually sold um, there, which was um, sold on the 6th. And they got the HMO license registered um, two or three weeks later. That probably wasn't sold as an HMO. That probably sold as, as residential and then, and then converted into a six bed. HMO probably under class L, I suspect. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So hopefully that's been helpful. Um, so are there any more questions, Andrew, that you want to want to pick up? Well, I'm conscious of time. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Good point. We have overrun, haven't we? So let's just jump back into um, let's just jump back into the slides if we could. So I think that's probably given us. Um, the amount of time we've got, we have got, if you want to try this yourself, you can have a free trial of our um, of our elite platform. There is then, um, as part of that, you can have a one-to-one -one demonstration where um, Andrew's team will take you through individually how to use the system um, for yourselves. 
and um, sort of applying it in the areas you're kind of most interested in effect. Um, we do until the end of today, actually, which is perhaps a little bit, a little bit um, quick, but we have the uh, Nimplex Elite platform, which we've been using for the bulk of today. There is the, the upgrade, little um, strategies that sort of sit separately from that, but usually that, that Elite system is £440. That gives you 12, 12 months access to it. Um, you get one-to-one -one support from our customer success team here at Nimbus. You get access to our weekly webinars with myself and, and guests. And you get access to our three-part training sessions, um, which retail at £475. Those are coming up. So there's um, part A coming up on the 2nd of July, part B on the 9th of July, and the third part on, um, on the, the 16th of July. There is a discount that's currently running at the moment, which is... Um, down to £1,888 from £1,440, which is our fifth year anniversary sale. Um, there is also a discount on our annual subscription. We can pay it monthly at £99 a month if you want to. Um, and indeed, if you're going on the sort of flexible monthly plan with us, that, um, that price is £120. In addition to that, the Elite Plus strategies that we've just been talking about, you actually get 12 months of the price of three at the moment. So those are um, usually £1,800 for, for a year, and actually you get those for £450 at the moment. So. If anybody's interested in, um, in any of that, I will launch a poll um, just to let you um, answer that if anyone wants to take advantage of that. Sort of slightly conscious of time in terms of the, um, the sale running. I guess, Andrew, if people register their interest now, then that have a bit more time to, to access that sale, will they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So to be honest, um, I know that the team are, are busy and their, their diaries are fairly full, to be honest. So, you know, if you try and book a call now, or if you say, look, I am interested today, um, and they don't speak to you for the next couple of days, then then we'll, we'll still honour the deal. Um, you know, we accept that, you know, you need to be able to speak to us and um, we need to get a hold of you. So, um, yeah, if you register today, then then absolutely we'll still honour it for when we when we do actually speak to you and, um, and if it gives you a few extra days to, to finally make a decision then as well. Fabulous. Fabulous. Um, great. So I think all that remains... Um, for me is to say firstly um thank you andrew for your time today thank you for um for guiding us through and for for your for your advice today yeah yeah then, thank you hopefully it was useful for everyone absolutely and then thank you all to you to you all for watching um my name is paul davis we've been nimbus maps we'll look forward to seeing you again soon all the best bye for now <laughs>